Okay, so this one we're going to look at chapter 10. In this chapter 10, we're going to be doing function operations. So it's outcome R1. All right. Uh, demonstrating an understanding of operations on and compositions of functions. So remember all that function notation stuff that we've been doing? We're going to be doing some operations on them. So here we've got sum and differences of functions, which sum means to add them, differences mean to subtract them. So here we've got h of x, we want to express h of x as f of x plus g of x. So all we do is take h of x. Now since we know it's equal to f and g, we can have x plus 1, which is our f of x, plus our g of x, which is 2x minus 3. So simplify, combine like terms. We've got our x's here, so that's 3x in total, and then our constant, which gives us negative 2. So this is h of x. That's the equation. Now, just a little side note that you, we have h of x expressed as f of x plus g of x written out separately, right? You could also have h of x written out like this. So f plus g in brackets and then of x. So adding the two functions together, you can also see the notation like this. So where the f and g are adding and then that's both a function of x. All right. Now, here we can write an equation to express, to represent k of x if k of x is f of x minus g of x. So that would simply be taking these two and subtracting them. Just mind the negative sign and also note that you'll have to have a bracket for the g of x around it so that that negative actually runs through that g of x function and we subtract, not just subtracting some of it and adding some of it. Okay, so be careful with that. So switch all the signs after the bracket and then combine like terms. So k of x is equal to, uh, I should have an x there, yep, negative x plus 4. So that's k of x. And another way that you could see k of x written or the way that this could be written would be f minus g and then that of x. Okay, so now we're going to look at the sketches of these functions, the sketches of these graphs, so f of x, g of x, h of x, and k of x. What I want to do is graph them all on the same grid. First, we're going to start with just f of x and g of x, and then I'm going to show you a way to use points in order to do that. So let's uh, hit pause and graph them. So graph them on your own and uh, we'll come back with f of x and g of x graphed. Okay, so hopefully you've taken the chance to graph f of x and g of x. So this is what my f of x and g of x look like. Now, next we're going to look at what the graph of h of x is. So h of x, we know the equation is 3x minus 2. So we have an idea of what it probably will look like, right? We have a, we're going to have a y-intercept of negative 2 and then we're going to have a slope of up 3 over 1, okay? So we have an idea of what it's going to look like. But I'm going to show you something with the points of f and g. So if I look at the y values of our function f and g, and uh, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the y values together since h of x is f plus g, right? Okay, so what's the y value for f of x over here? The y value is for f of x is 0. What's the y value for g of x? So what do I get when I add them together? 
I got negative 5. So I'm going to put an x there. Okay, and I'm going to do this for all the y values. So what are the, what, what's the y value for f? 1. And what's the y value for g? So what do I get when I add them together? Negative 2. What's the y value for f here? 2. What's the y value for g here? Okay, what do I get when I add them together? 1. Does this follow what my graph is right here, what my equation is right here? So far it is, right? I've got my y-intercept at negative 2, and my slope right here is 3 over 1. So let's try it again for this point here and see what I get. What's the y value for my f and my g here? I've got 3 and 1. I add them together. I get 4. Does that follow what the slope is? So let's say I didn't have the equations. I just had points on a graph or lines on a graph that didn't, didn't have an equation. What could I do to come up with the sum of those two functions for add the y values together, right? So I'm going to label this as h of x. All I do, it, it, I just do it for the y values, okay? Because <clears throat> the inputs are still the same, it's the y values that are being changed, the y values coming out. So then what is uh, k of x going to be? So k of x was f minus g of x, right? And let's just have that on the side so I can verify that it does work. So I'm going to take my f and my g, and I'm going to do what with the y values now? Subtract them. Perfect. So negative 1, no, sorry, this is, what's the y value right here for f of x at negative 1? <coughs> it's 0. And what about here? So make sure I have it in the right order. So I go f minus g of x. So let's subtract them now. So I'm always going to take my f first and then my g. What is 0 minus negative 5? 0 minus negative 5. So that's plus 5. So that ends up actually up here. Okay. Now what is f minus, so f minus g, right? So 1, 1 minus negative 3 is 3. So over here, oh, sorry, that's 4. So that's going to be right here. Okay, 1 minus negative 3, that's 4. Okay, and then over here for x equals 1, what is 2 minus negative 1? So that's going to be right here. Now, is this so far following the equation that I have? Yeah, so where's my y-intercept? It's at 4, and what's my slope? It is 1, 1 over 1. What happens when I uh, subtract these two? What do I get? One. So 3 minus 1 gives me 2. So that ends up right here. Cool? 4 minus 3 equals 4 minus 3 equals come on, 1. Awesome. It's following my pattern. Okay, so I need to take these and I connect the dots here. Yeah, they're kind of X's. They are. And let's label this equation so that I know what I'm looking at. So I'm going to write K of X equals negative X plus 4. Pardon me? I could write just K of X. Yep. <coughs> Yep, totally. Okay, so just a reminder, so to find the new values for H and K, all you have to do is perform the operation on the Y values of F and G. All right. Okay, so now example two, so this next one here, we've got X squared and negative 2x plus 1. So let's sketch those two. So x squared, you guys remember, that is uh, 
uh, 2, 2 and 4. So I've got this, 1 and 1, 2 and 4, so it's the parabola. Okay, I've got it going through 0, a nice curve, and arrow heads. I've got a couple of key points right here, and that's what I'm going to use. And what is negative 2x plus 1? Well, my plus 1 is right here. What's my slope? Down 2 over 1. Down 2 over 1. And then to go the other way is there. Okay. So now I've got those two on my graph. So this is f of x, and this is g of x over here, the straight line. And then below, what is the question asking us to do? It says sketch f plus g of x, all right, using only the graph. So we're not going to have any other information. We're not going to add them together. We're not going to add the two equations together, figure out what the equation is. We're just going to use the two graphs. So what are my key points right here and here? So my y values are 4 and 5. Where is this point going to end up? <laughs> At 9. It's off the graph. So what about here? What are my y values here? So I've got 3 and 1. So where is that going to end up? Four. At 4. So add those two values together. How about here? What's 1 plus 0? 1 plus 0 is still 1. What is uh, 1 plus negative 1? 0. And then what is 4 plus negative 3? 1. Okay, so what do you notice is happening to this? So it's a parabola, and where is it going? It's actually been shifted over <laughs> to the right one unit. Okay, so. Um, do you want to verify that? See if that's actually the equation? Yeah, let's do it. Hey, look. Oh, ha! Huh. That's the next question. Well, did you imagine that? Did you guess that that was coming? Kind of? Barely. Surprise! It was almost kind of natural, hey? So, here we go. Let's add the two together, x squared plus, um, okay, so x squared minus 2x plus 1. Now, uh, what can you tell me about what that looks like? Hmm. If I were to factor this, what would it end up being? Minus 1 squared. What do you know about what this looks like as a parabola? This is actually a parabola shifted over one unit to the right. Correct. Cool, hey? So factor to get that. That's why it looks different. All right. Now. I'm going to cut it off over here, and then I'm going to do uh, another video for the next part. So the next part is going to be using graphs that aren't necessarily given equations. You're just given graphs. Did that make sense? I'm sorry. <laughs> Stay tuned. It'll make sense when I show you. Okay?